let's say I throw my favorite ball into a swimming pool. Okay, so the ball will float because uh, my ball has some air inside and it's quite quite light. It will float. Now, and then suppose that you decide you want to go for a swim. Okay, so you jump into the water. But you'll probably sink. Yeah, you'll probably sink. Maybe you'll float a bit, okay, but you will sink a lot. Now, but you will feel a lot lighter, right? Even if you sink and stand at the bottom, uh, if hopefully there's a bottom, you'll feel a lot lighter than when you're standing on, on dry ground. Okay. So in, in both the case of of the ball and yourself, if you are if you go swimming, uh, there is the reason why a ball floats is because there must be a force pushing it up from the water, and the reason why you feel lighter must also be that there is a force that pushes you up. Now, this force, this force is called an up thrust. An up thrust. Let's think a bit about why there is an up thrust. How does up thrust come about? Why why does water give you give you this upward force? Where does it come from? Now to understand this, let me um let me think of, uh, say, a, a simple shape, right? just to make things simpler. Let's say I have a, 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 maybe um, a cylinder. Okay. A cylinder here. Okay. So if I have a cylinder here, uh, inside the water, there will be water pressure, water pressure all around, pushing at it. Okay, let me draw some forces, arrows to show these forces. So there will be forces from water on the top, forces from water on the side, okay, and forces from water at the bottom. This come from the water pressure. Okay. And and we want to think about how how these forces can give the up thrust because there are no other forces uh on the cylinder, right? So so any up thrust, any force from the water must come from the water pressure. So we do that by elimination. Yeah, so so we, we have to find our way to the answer. Okay. Now if you look at the force on, on on the on the left and on the right, see this ship is symmetrical, so we would expect that the force on the right and left must cancel. Now what about the forces from the top and from the bottom? Now this comes from the water pressure, right? So forces from the bottom uh, must have higher pressure, uh, must well, the pressure at the bottom must be bigger because because it's deeper in the water. So uh, uh, the forces from the, the the total force at the bottom must be bigger than the total force from the top, right? So if I if I think about the force, let me call this um, F two. And I'll call this F1. The force on top must be smaller than the force at the bottom. Okay, because of the higher pressure at the bottom. So now we have our answer. Up thrust comes from the water pressure. Up thrust happens because uh, we feel an up thrust because the water pressure on our legs is bigger than the water pressure on our head. So we end up having more forces pushing our leg, uh, our legs up, 
then the force that push our head down from the water on top. So the next thing we want to do now is to find out how to calculate this force. Now since the force comes from pressure, I can uh, think about um, pressure. Right, pressure and force. Pressure and force are related by this formula. Pressure is equal to force over area. Okay. So this relation means that if I know the pressure, then I can find the force. But what is the pressure? Okay. Pressure. Now we also have a formula for liquid pressure. Um, the liquid or air, air pressure. Liquid pressure. For a fluid that has um, uniform density, um, so we are going to assume that the density is the same higher up or lower down. The formula is given by rho g h. The rho here is the density of the uh, water. G is the acceleration due to gravity, and h is the depth. H is the depth. Now let's see how we can use it here. So, um, let's see. So, what is the pressure here? Now suppose that, um, suppose that the depth of of this level of the top face of, of the cylinder is h one, okay, and the uh, and the depth of the lower face of the cylinder. The lower face of the cylinder is H2, let's say. So the pressure at the top of the cylinder, according to this formula, then must be rho G times H1. That's the pressure down here. Pressure at the bottom must be rho G times H2. Two, so these these are pressures. These are not forces, right? I'll, I'll write down P one just to remind myself that these are pressures. Okay, so we have that. Now, as I said, the up thrust, the up thrust comes from um, the force at the bottom big, being bigger than the force. On the top, so that means that the up thrust is just the difference between the two forces. I'll call, I'll use the symbol u to represent the up thrust. So u therefore must be equal to the um, force F two, the lower force minus the upper force. Okay, F two minus F. One. Okay, so now what I'm what I want to do is to to find a way to calculate um, the up thrust, meaning that uh, if let's say I know how deep this thing is and I know um, the weight of this thing, I know the size and I know uh, the density of the water, can I somehow calculate this up thrust? Just by knowing the maybe the volume or the size of the cylinder, okay, and and the density of the water. So, so things that I'll probably know are things like um, okay, let's let's make, maybe make that clear. I would probably know uh, the density of the water. That's the rho. I would know maybe the depth of the object, all right, or, or the two ends of the object. I know I would know the acceleration due to gravity. I would know the maybe the length of the cylinder. So these are the things that, that I would know. Okay, I, I would know maybe I'll, I'll just write down the known quantities uh, we are given. All right, so I take it that we are given things like um, density of the water, uh, acceleration due to gravity, uh, h one and h two. 
like the two levels of the object uh, or maybe even the, the area cross-sectional area of the object area of this face here with the top face there um, all the information that we can obviously see and, and measure suppose that we have all those um, so if I plunge this uh, object into the water what is up for us? can I calculate it without actually having to to uh, put it in and, and measure it okay so these are the numbers that I know okay so let, let's say that's the case um, so how can I calculate it right let's let's uh, make use of these equations because these equations I already understand that uh, the forces are, are related to the pressure and the pressures are in turn related to rho g h1 h2 things that I know uh, that 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 um, are given Okay, so let's see if we can find a formula in terms of those uh, given uh, quantities. So F two, F two is um, um, ah right. So uh, well, we need to relate F two to to the pressure uh, and other things. So from from this formula for the pressure, it, we can bring A over to the other side. So we know we know that uh, force is equal to pressure times area. So F2 therefore would be the pressure P2 times the area and P2 is this right so this is rho g h2 that's that's the pressure uh, at the bottom times the area of the bottom face all right same area a uniform cylinder so that that's my F2 okay likewise for F1 same idea except that I have P1 for the pressure and H1 for the time so I get the same expression but I, I just have to change the H2 to H1 so rho G H1 A so I have this complicated looking expression but you see there's something uh, common about the two terms here everything is the same except for the H uh, H1 and H2 so and then we try and simplify this and see whether I can get some something useful. So I'm going to factor out the common factors rho, g, and a. Okay. Rho, g, and a. And what uh, is left of the H2 and H1? So I put those in a bracket H2 and H1. And uh, there is a minus sign, so there is a minus sign. Okay, uh, okay, it doesn't look a lot simpler, but you see, let's think about the meaning of H2 minus H1. Right? Let's think about this meaning physically, maybe it will help. H2 minus H1 uh, is this it's the depth of the bottom face minus the depth of the top face, but this gives us the length of the cylinder. All right, H2 minus H1 is actually the length of the cylinder okay so the length of the cylinder times times a here length of the cylinder times a length of the cylinder times a must give us the volume must give us the volume so this part here is actually the volume so now we we, we have a physical meaning for this part and if it's the volume then uh, we know how to find the volume. Yeah, we know how to find the volume. So, so, so therefore, I have a simpler expression now. Uh, this is actually the same. This, which is the up thrust, is rho g <coughs> times the volume. So that's my formula. That's my formula for the up thrust, which means that if I know the um, density of the water, I know the acceleration due to gravity. Uh, and the volume of the cylinder, then I can just multiply them together and get the get the up thrust. Yeah, just just to make it uh, clear that this is uh, these uh, numbers are quite easy easy to get. Um, the density of water for water it is one thousand one thousand kg per meter cubed okay and g acceleration due to gravity is 
9.81 um, meters per second squared. And V is V is just the volume of the cylinder. So if you have a cylinder of any shape, um, now you must somehow know or, or measure the volume. Okay, but hopefully that wouldn't be too difficult. So once you know the density of the liquid, so it doesn't have to be water, it can be oil, it can be other liquid. Uh, and we know G is a is a is a constant. And you you can if, when you have found the, the volume of the object. You would be able to just multiply these three numbers together to get the obstructs, to get the force that pushes your object 